Hello everyone. Greetings to you all in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I believe you're doing good. Welcome to another episode of Prophetic Time. I believe this videos are blessing you and helping you to come more closer to God. And those who are watching me for the first time, this is Evans Francis from Nagpur, India. I'm an evangelist into full-time ministry from last 16 years. And I believe that today's message, God is going to bless you immensely. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, do subscribe, hit the bell icon. So whenever I come live, I share a video or a post, a dream from the Lord or a vision from the Lord or a message from the Lord, you will be notified. I believe we live in a time where our faith has been tested and this message is going to bless you immensely and this message is going to encourage you in the Lord. So without wasting a lot of time, let us pray and dive into the word of God. Father God, we come to thy presence in this wonderful time, Master. Lord, we come to your throne of grace. Thank you for all the good things you have done in our life, Master. Thank you for always being with us, taking care of us, providing all our needs according to your riches and glory. Even though we are not faithful towards you many times, but you are always faithful towards us. For that we thank you, Abba. I give today's word into thy hand. I give your children into thy hand, Master. Lord, give me your wisdom and knowledge, strength and courage, Master, to share your word in its context, Master. No plan of the devil prevail, Master. All the disturbances, I cancel it in the name of Jesus. Lord, you are doing it for that. I thank you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 When we read Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 5, it says, The Lord replied, Look around at the nations, look and be amazed, for I am doing something in your own day, something you wouldn't believe even if someone told you about it. I believe, people of God, that in the coming days and in this specifically in this month, many of you are going to witness a great miracle in your life many of you are struggling in finance many of you are struggling physically many of you are struggling mentally in all the areas of your life many of you are struggling but i want to tell you something that god is going to do something supernaturally in a way that you wouldn't believe even if someone told you about it and that's the beauty of god that when he does something, people don't believe it. Uh, and they, instead of believing God, instead of trusting God, instead of uh, magnifying God, instead of praising God, they credit it to the devil or something evil. Because for them, it's not possible for uh, something like that to happen. But our God is a God for him. Nothing is impossible. So you need to know something that something impossible God is going to do in your life, in your coming days. Your situation is going to change. Your uh, problems is going to change. That has that uh, burden over your life, uh, which has been there for years and decades, that is going to be removed uh, in the coming days. Uh, and uh, I believe strongly in my spirit uh, that God is about to move in your life and a shift is going to take place in a way that you have never dreamt of that you have never believed never is going to be you are never going to believe that something like that is going to happen I can strongly feel in my spirit that some marriages are going to take place uh, and uh, you are uh, people in 40s uh, who have lost all hopes uh, and you are going to be married in a way that you have never thought of god is going to bring the right person in your life uh, and it's not going to be a second hand it's going to be first hand it's not going to be a divorce it's not going to be a a widow uh, but it's going to be the first hand person who has never been married and such people god is going to bring together and when god is going to do a wonderful thing a wonderful thing in many of your life just receive your miracle in jesus name when we read genesis chapter 22 uh, there we can see that abraham's uh, faith is being tested it says sometimes later god tested abraham's faith abraham God called. Yes, he replied, here I am. The first thing you need to understand is we as readers, we know that God is testing Abraham. But, uh, but Abraham, when he was undergoing that test, uh, he was not knowing that. And he knew it's a test. Uh, and, but uh, he didn't uh, 
had that option to understand that when we go through the trials and struggles in our life every situation that comes that's a test but we don't understand that a test but we always when problem comes what happens is that we always think like a normal situation and try to do that situation or work for that situation uh, to come out of that situation in our uh, intelligence uh, but here also abraham being a human could have uh, relied upon his own understanding but we see that how he worked uh, and how he he faced this situation but you need to see something that god called abraham and abraham replied yes here i am what you can see is that god calls everyone but the problem is we are not able to hear him remember god is calling you and he has called you so many times through his word uh, to in your dreams in your when you sleep in prayer but the problem is we don't listen to him remember when god called samuel um you know he ran to eli and uh, my question to you is do you run to humans uh, rather than towards god but today we live in a time we need allies who help us to recognize god's voice and start a relationship with him today we know certain many of the servants of god so called servants of god do see that uh, i will listen for you i will heal you i will deliver you and it is very very important uh, it is very very important you know that uh, we need servants of god who teach us to hear the word of god we need servants of god uh, like eli who help us to recognize god's voice and become a person that god wants us to be just imagine if eli would have said something else uh, samuel's ministry would have been different but eli taught him and told him what to do when god calls you when in the in the middle of the night when you get up and you are thinking why you got up remember that is the right time to come on your knees and ask the lord lord i am your servant speak to me because many times god wakes us up so that we can sit and pray and listen to him and we can have a communion with him that is very very important uh, when we read verse 2 it says uh, take your son your only son yes isaac whom you love so much and go to the land of moriah go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains which i will show you something is there that is very resembles to another word it says only son and if you know the word of god you know john 3:16 it says for god so loved the world he gave his one and only son here you can see abraham also had only son remember that uh, it was not an easy task for god uh, uh, to give that and it was not an easy uh, test for abraham also remember god will test our faith by asking us to sacrifice those things that are most dear to us that he has blessed us with uh, remember we are tested as abraham was abraham was as we are the seeds uh, as we are the seed of abraham when we read galatians chapter 3 verse 29 it says and now that you belong to christ you are the two children of abraham you are his heirs uh, and uh, god's promise to abraham belongs to you what i mean to say is here god said the son you love he loved his son and as a as a parent many of you who are listening you know that uh, it's not a uh, uh, possible for a parent who loves uh, their children to sacrifice uh, but here god was asking abraham to sacrifice uh, his son so but remember god never asked uh, human sacrifice in the whole bible you know he was against it uh, but he was uh, checking the priority of abraham he was testing him to see what he does uh, when we read the verse 3 it says the next morning abraham got up early he sandaled his donkey and took uh, two of his servants with him along with his son isaac then he chopped wood for a fire for a burnt offering and set out for the place god had told him about uh, remember beloved no test uh, 
could have been more severe than the one God now imposed uh, on Abraham's life. Uh, but at the same time, we can see that no obedience could have been more perfect than Abraham's. Uh, he got up early, he sandaled his donkey and he took a uh, Two of his servants with him and uh, with his son Isaac he chopped the wood for the fire for the burnt offering and set out to the place God had told him to remember first thing we can learn from here is that Abraham rose up early without hesitating to speak with other members of the family or friends uh, uh, what I mean to say is uh, do not let friends and family talk you out of doing what you know is God's will. Second thing we can see is that uh, Abraham made preparation for the sacrifice. Uh, remember, if we prepare ourselves, it will prevent us from delivering poor performance. Uh, remember, when we are fully prepared to do God's will, you will face less temptation to shrink at that moment of our greatest tests. Uh, remember, when we read Luke chapter 14 verse 31, there we see Jesus said that no king goes to battle unless he makes all necessary preparation in advance. Uh, remember, we have to prepare. Abraham prepared uh, for that journey we have to prepare in our life uh, the time when we get uh, don't waste it uh, but come on your knees and pray the more you pray you will be able to overcome the temptations uh, devil brings in your life uh, one of the thing that uh, one of the thing that the uh, uh, character of jesus was uh, he kept on praying being son of god he kept on praying he kept on praying that's the character we need to have uh, in our lives the third thing we can see here is abraham did not tell his wife sarah who would have tried to talk him out of offering their only sons uh, what we can learn from here is uh, sometimes we have to only tell people what they need to know even those who are closest to us many times uh, that's the mistake we do and i have also committed that same mistake in my life the where we open ourselves we open our heart we open our secrets to people uh, who are closer to closest to us but but sometime we need to tell people only what they need to know that is very very important uh, when we read genesis uh, chapter 22 verse 4 it says on the third day of the journey abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance uh, stay here with the donkey abraham told the servants uh, the boy and i will travel a little further uh, we will worship there then we will come right back uh, what we can learn from here is that abraham carefully looked around him to discover the place appointed for the sacrifice uh, remember god made the man of god abraham wait until the light illuminated uh, the exact place uh, where the sacrifice should be made should be made uh, what that what uh, we can learn from that is that we must wait on god to show us even at the last minute where he want us to go do not try to run ahead of god in your scheduling the one other thing that we can learn from here is that abraham left his servants at a far distance away remember he did not want his people interfering with what god expected him to do remember when we worship god be sure to lay aside all distractions worries and possibilities of interference uh, attend to god's business without uh, uh, anything that may hinder you from concentrating on the task at hand uh, remember many times uh, you know we do a mistake that uh, we bring people in our life and they those people destroy our family our ministry our children's life uh, yeah, our church uh, that's why we need to make boundaries in our life uh, and until and unless you have boundaries in your life you will never be able to excel in your life uh, you can't allow 
anyone to uh, come closer to you in your family and speak uh, for on your behalf or your wife's behalf uh, you need to keep distance uh, that is very very important here abraham knew that if he brings his servant it's a servant what does that mean servant has a has a lower place uh, and they they should uh, what with uh, from abraham's action we can see that he maintained a distance you are servants so you need to wait here something personal me and my son need to do remember do not may bring your servants uh, in your friends list do not bring friends uh, in your family's list do not bring family in your uh, ministry list that is very very important you need to break and make proper boundaries in your life if you want to excel in your life when we read verse 6 it says so abraham placed the wood for the burnt offering on isaac's shoulder while he himself carried the fire and the knife as the two of them walked on together we you know many people when they go to the sunday school they see abraham as a child uh, maybe 10 12 years uh, but remember isaac was not a child he was possibly a 25 to 30 years old and isaac carried the wood for his own sacrifice up the mountain this is uh, this is important to note uh, uh, since a 25 year old uh, man could have easily resisted that he has been so inclined uh, remember he was not a small boy as is so often portrayed in sunday school materials and taught to our children uh, this was a strong healthy and young man with much of his life to come he had to see his marriage children and pursuit of all the usual priorities of this uh, earthly life uh, yet he willingly carried the wood uh, i want you to see that in isaac's case uh, same as in isaac's case uh, jesus could have resisted uh, he had his own will just uh, uh, just as we have our own will he could have declined to come in the first place and he could have resisted the cross uh, but remember isaac trusted his father to be obeying god's will and not only did he go willingly he carried the wood uh, but abraham had passed the test uh, and isaac had certainly passed the test of obedience obedience even to death uh, when we read john chapter 19 verse 17 it says carrying the cross by himself he went he went to the place called uh, place of the skull in hebrew golgotha remember jesus here when you see the picture uh, isaac is carrying the wood same way jesus is carrying his cross to the place of skull called uh, golgotha when we read uh, romans chapter uh, 8 verse 3 it says the law of moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature so god did what the law could not do he sent his own son in a body like the bodies we sinner have and in that body god declared an end to sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice uh, for our sins uh, so the question arises is uh, who crucified jesus uh, was it the romans for fear was it the jews for envy was it judas for money no to all three it was god for love when we read verse 7 it says isaac uh, turned to abraham and said father yes my son abraham replied we have the fire and the wood the boy said but where is the sheep for the burnt offering yeah uh, verse 8 says God will provide a sheep for the burnt offering my son Abraham answered and they both walked on together 
beloved that's called faith uh, abraham says that god will provide uh, remember that abraham never gave up hope that god will provide a lamb to sacrifice uh, and when we read verse 13 we see that god did provide for a sacrifice uh, what we can learn here is that uh, abraham calmly tells his worried son the lord will provide uh, Remember, beloved, even when it seems that there is no hope, we must uh, also say to all doubters, uh, God will provide what I need. Uh, we must believe God will provide us with friends, employment, wisdom, food, shelter or whatever we need when God see fit to give us our daily provision. Do not fear. When you get in difficult situation since God knows exactly how much and when you need things. Uh, when we read Hebrews chapter 11 verse 19 it says Abraham reasoned that if Isaac died God was able to bring him back to life again and in a sense Abraham did receive his uh, son back from the dead. Uh, remember and we read verse 9 it says when they arrived at the place where god had told him to go abraham built an altar and arranged the wood on it then he tied his son isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood and abraham picked up the knife to kill his son as a sacrifice remember beloved a true worshiper of god holds back nothing from God but obediently gives him what he asks uh, trusting trusting that he will provide uh, when we read Genesis chapter 22 verse 11 it says at that moment uh, the angel at that moment uh, the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven Abraham Abraham yes Abraham replied uh, here I am do not lay a hand on the boy the angel said do not hurt him in any way for now i know that you truly fear god you have not withheld from me even your son your only son same way god didn't uh, uh, did not withheld his only son that was jesus for us uh, abraham did not withhold his son and similarly paul wrote uh, the, uh, that uh, in romans 8 32 since he did not spare his even spare even his own son but gave him up for all won't he give us everything else uh, when we read verse 13 it says then abraham looked up and saw a ram caught by its horn in a thicket so he took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering in place of his son abraham named the place yehovah yire which means the lord will provide to this day people still use that name as a proverb on the mountain of the lord it will be provided uh, remember beloved here we can see a supernatural miracle took place in the life of uh, abraham and same thing you are going to witness in your life in the coming days uh, remember beloved after god gives us a miracle we need to thank god for the work uh, there are four main ways of doing this first through your testimony by telling others what god has done for your life second through your treasures financially supporting the work uh, of uh, of his church uh, third through your talents uh, using the gifts of the spirit uh, gives you gives you in the church uh, and for the through your time taking a portion of your time each week in church prayer and study and it, when we read from verse 15 to 18 it says then the angel of the lord called again to abraham from heaven this is what the lord says because you have obeyed me and have not withheld even your your son your only son i swear by my own name that i will certainly bless you i will multiply your descendants beyond numbers like the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore your descendants will conquer the cities of their enemy and through your descendants all the nations of the earth will be blessed uh, all because you have obeyed me remember when 
Isaac uh, carried the wood uh, the same way Jesus carried the wood uh, and in both cases father and son walked on together and uh, remember beloved don't be afraid the triune God walks with you and in exchange for your life he will give you his life so when your faith is been tested uh, don't uh, use your intelligence uh, don't use your brains uh, historians tell that uh, when we read verse uh, chapter 22 uh, we see the sacrifice of uh, a test of abraham for sacrificing in son, his son and in chapter 23 we see sarah died uh, and lot of historians believe and lot of uh, servants of God teach it's just for an information uh, you can use it as you want uh, many people they say that Sarah died when she came to know the truth uh, that Abraham uh, tried to sacrifice his own son and if God hadn't intervened uh, we know that Abraham would have would have sacrificed his son that is the faith Abraham had. Why he had that faith? Have you ever wondered why he had so much of faith? Because he was a man who got a son at the age of 100. Uh, I know many, I don't know how many of you have seen a person at the age of 100. Uh, if you see a person, many of you have seen people in 80s, in 90s, and you know, you can see how much weak they are. In that weak body, you know, he bore a son, he got a son, and he saw that when he couldn't do anything physically, you know how God strengthened him and how God blessed him with a son and he believed that if God can give me a son when I was dead physically God can give life to my son who is dead physically that's the faith that's why it is very important remember the work God has done for you and it will give you the strength and courage to face every trials in your life do not worry about anything do not uh, think about anything but trust in the Lord put your faith in him and God will take care of you God will help you God will be with you and uh, remember in this world you will have trials you will have temptations you will have struggles but remember God is on top of it uh, and he is already devil is already been defeated he has to no dominion over you don't if you don't give chance to the devil to work in your life you will be able to overcome all the trials and struggles in your life i believe this message has blessed you let us pray father god we come to thy presence in this wonderful time master lord we come to your throne of grace thank you for all the good things you have done in our life master thank you for always being with us taking care of us providing all our needs according to your riches and glory even though we are not faithful towards you many times but you are always faithful towards us for that we thank you Abba I give you children into the hand their lives into the hand their families into the hand their relatives into the hand their ministry their calling their job their businesses into the hand master Lord I pray that every trials that they are going through every test that they are going through Lord give them your wisdom and knowledge strength and courage to, to overcome that situation master as Abraham Lord uh, triumphantly overcame the test that you put before him same way May your children go through that test uh, and, and come out of it with flying colors, Master. Lord, uh, every wrong connections, every wrong people be removed from their life. Give them your wisdom and knowledge, Master, to create boundaries in their life, Master, so that, Lord, uh, people who are supposed to be servants don't uh, take place of sons. Uh, and, Lord, many people uh, whose life has been destroyed, marriages have been destroyed, Master. Lord, uh, Give them the wisdom and knowledge to repair their life, Master. No plan of the devil, no plan of the evil one prevail, Master. Lord, I set them free in the name of Jesus. Every bondage is, uh, every blockage is, Master. Every stagnation brought by the devil be removed from their life in the name of Jesus. No plan of the devil. No plan of the evil one prevail, Master. Right, set them free in the name of Jesus, Lord. May they able to overcome all the trials in their life, Master. 
Fill them with your wisdom and knowledge, strength and courage, Master. Lord, fill them with your spirit, Master. May they walk in your word, Master. And may they follow you, Master. May they overcome all the trials and struggles, Master. No plan of the devil, no plan of the evil one prevail, Master. I set them free in the name of Jesus, Master. Uh, Lord, you're doing it for that. I thank you, Master. Lord, you're doing it for that. I thank you, Master. Lord, you're doing it for that. I thank you, Master. Every spiritual deafness be removed from their life in the name of Jesus. Every spiritual blindness be removed from their life in the name of Jesus. Uh, Lord, help them to understand uh, uh, your word, Master. Let no devil come, no Satan come and steal what uh, has been sowed by this word, Master, in this video. Lord, you're doing it for that. I thank you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 I believe this message has blessed you. And if this message has blessed you, see to it that you share this message with your friends and loved ones. And if you're using an Android phone or an Apple phone, you can download my app. App name is uh, Evans Francis. And if the Lord leads you, become a pillar of fire or a pillar of cloud of our small ministry. And links are also there in the description below. Uh, if feel free to get in touch with us. You can share your uh, prayer request through WhatsApp. Uh, my WhatsApp number, email address, website, everything what we do uh, is been shared uh, in the description. Uh, if the Lord leads you, get connected with us uh, and share the visions that uh, God has given us uh, and uh, and uh, if uh, you haven't subscribed to this channel do subscribe hit the bell icon so whenever I come live I share a video or a post a dream from the Lord a vision from the Lord or a message from the Lord you will be notified uh, and uh, do like this video and share as much as possible may God bless you may his face shine upon you Keep smiling, stay blessed, shalom.